Hello and welcome to another Optelec Enhanced Vision webinar. Today I'm very pleased to say I've been joined by Stuart Wellens, who is the uh, owner, director of ICET, uh, which is a, a, an education training uh, organisation. Uh, so welcome, Stuart. Hi, Paul. You well? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. I'm good. Good, good, good. So uh, for, the, for the viewers, uh, could you tell us a little bit first about uh, about yourself, a little bit about your history, maybe, and also uh, a bit about what ICT is about? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm a dispensing optician. Um, I started in optics back in 2004, 2005, um, completely by accident. Um, I was working in IT. Um, I ended up doing admin and worked for a variety of people from um, Birmingham City Council um, directory inquiries and IT support and lo loads of different uh, random jobs that are that just really sort of um, depressed the hell out of me really <laughs> soul destroying sounds possibly, like me possibly one one. <laughs> yeah. I mean some, some of your viewers might be too young to remember 118 um, but yeah it's just like before Google, I suppose, where people could just access the information. They'd phone you up and ask for a phone number for this, that, the other. Uh, but yeah, but that was kind of soul destroying. And yes. then uh, I saw I saw a job advertised for. Um, it was called a, a diagnostic specialist, um, with a company called Ultralays, um, who, who they're no longer going anymore. But they used to do um, laser vision correction, laser surgery, um, and they just wanted someone with a bit of IT background, someone who could be a bit technical. Um, and it sounded like a really great job title. Um, basically, it was a pre-screener. So I'd go in, um, do do like you know the standard pre-test that you do for an eye test, and a few extra scans for the you know, to measure the corneal thickness and corneal topography and stuff like that. And um, I just kind of got the bug really. Um, I was I never sort of imagined myself doing anything like that. And then it, in my mind, as a sort of you know like a normal sort of working class kid from Birmingham I didn't really think being an optician was something that we did um, <laughs> and then one of the optums that I worked with a um, lady named Carly um, she, she was just she was just great she, she was from near where I grew up and um, and because I was quite interested in learning about the eyes and stuff like that she was like you know sort of encouraged me to to pursue it really so I went from um, ultra laser went across to optical express um, again, another laser provider, but they also had the spectacle side of things um, with the idea of doing the DO course, um, potentially doing that as a foot in the door to get into optometry. Um, so yeah, I did my DO course there. Um, then I moved on to Spec Savers in uh, New Street in Birmingham, which was okay. uh, one of the largest Spec Savers in the country, probably in the world actually. So it was uh, very fast paced, very sort of uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hard yeah, going. As, as they tend to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, lots, I've, I've, I've locumed in a few different speckies, but um, yeah, that, that kind of scale, you do get to see uh, a vast amount of stuff, really. Okay. Um, I got into contact lenses a bit more there as well, so I found that quite interesting. Um, did the CLO course, um, got to the point where I'd done my theory exams and I was, uh, was going to spend another year compiling my case records. Uh, to do my practical exams and then um, I had another opportunity to go and work for ASDA um, so I left Specsavers and I went and worked for ASDA I uh, opened a new practice uh, up in Redditch uh, so I was there for five years I left I left in March actually March just gone right. um, so while I was at ASDA um, I started organizing a few little sort of local peer reviews to get a group of the managers together um, just for a bit of a chat, really, some of the locums and some of the managers that we work with. Um, and then people just started asking me to do more. So I thought maybe I should start charging people for this service. So I set up a CET and that, that was how it all started, really. Um, so, yeah, it started off literally about 10 of us in, in, a, in a meeting room in, in an Asda store. And then um, we went to a restaurant and did one just about six or seven of us at a table did one round the table in a restaurant. Um, so yeah, Cafe Soya in, in Birmingham near the Boring, if anyone wants to check it out. <laughs> the yes. restaurant. It's very, yeah, it's one of my favorite restaurants. So that was good. Um, and then we organized our first sort of bigger meeting, um, which was uh, mostly cricket club in Birmingham. Um, we had about 30 or 40 people. Um, we got in touch with a few different 
suppliers, a few different sponsors. We had um, obviously Bondi, so people know we, we do a hell of a lot of work with Bondi. Yeah. Um, so they supported us um, with goodie bags and stuff like that. Uh, we got the eyewear company involved as well. Um, so they were there displaying some frames. Um, and that's how it all kind of started, really. Um, okay. And then from there, we ended up doing our next one down in St. Albans, where we had about 80-odd about people. Um, so, yeah, so it just kind of snowballed from there, really. Um, we went from doing, like, a couple of shows in the first year, and then we went, just ramped it up, really, and started doing about eight or nine shows a year all over the UK. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. And obviously, yeah, yeah, we attended many of them, and uh, there were always really good turnouts and uh, numbers. So, uh, yeah, you must have been doing something right. Yeah, I think it was just, we tried <laughs> to make it quite affordable, really. I think that was uh, yeah. a key for it. I think you, you, you do tend to get quite a split crowd in optics when it comes to education you, you in terms of optoms they they get like the nhs grants so they do get a, a little bit that can claim it uh can fund their education um and then you will get people who are more than happy to pay a lot of money um to go to certain specific speakers and to see certain lectures and you know etc and things like yeah. that um but on the other hand you've, you've got a lot of people in optics who are um, who don't have access to that kind of grant. Um, they want something affordable. They want something you know, that they can go on one day, enjoy the day, and get as many points and as much value as possible. So we try to get rid of that angle with CET. Uh, and just like I say, just make it easy and accessible for people, really. Um, yeah. Offering sort of 12 points in a day, covering as many competencies as we can with, a, with topics that, that relate to optoms and DOs and CLOs. So it's so a bit of a mixed bag. Um, so, so it's open for everyone. Um, yeah. yeah, and that, that's how we kind of did it, really. Um, okay. Okay. In terms of venues and stuff, we, we sort of go for things like, um, you know, community halls, uh, school halls, things like that. So, again, we, we're keeping our cost down so we can provide it at a cheaper price to our, to our sort of customers and delegates. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, absolutely, and uh, we as an organisation use the same sort of facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the most affordable, and uh, and again, I suppose from, from our point of view, they need to be easily accessible as well. Uh, I suppose maybe a little bit less so for, 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 for the clients that you're dealing with, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, costs are, are important, so uh, yeah. absolutely. And yeah. Uh, yeah, as you say, you've had the odd church hall and, uh, and you know, things like that, sports also, uh, or even yeah. a school. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, we did a, a church hall by by accident, really, because we we had a venue in Leeds um, last year, the year before, wasn't it? Yeah, we, yes. we booked a, um, a town hall in Leeds. It was like one of the poshest venues that we'd ever booked. Um, and then when we turned up, the the caretaker didn't bother yes. to let us yeah. in. So <laughs> yeah. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, I, I remember it well. <laughs> <laughs> but considering, yeah, we uh, the uh, the uh, the the church there really really helped us <laughs> Ma massively. So uh, yeah. yeah, it was a, a, an interesting one. Luckily, so, okay. it was up the road, wasn't it? Literally like that. It, it was. It was. It was. Uh, everybody quickly run. It's over there, and uh, and having to uh, leave uh, a couple of your of your guys at the at the old building to say what we're here yeah. now. We're, yeah, we're over yeah. here. <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, again, you know, th things like that happen. But, uh, but, but what always interested uh, me in, in in those early days was just the amount of people you could pull in. Uh, mm. uh, for, even in that scenario, which yeah. many people would have just tore their hair out and ran, <laughs> screaming into the hills. But uh, you know, uh, it, it worked. So uh, yeah, okay. So so uh, so so moving forward. Uh, I, I know beginning of this year, end of last year, also like 2019, early 2020, you also uh, managed to uh, basically take over the running of the uh, eye care uh, conferences, which has uh, been going a, a long time. I'm sure you can tell me uh, the, uh, how long exactly be, been going. So, uh, yeah, so t t t tell me a little bit more about the, the eye care education uh, conferences and exhibitions. So I Care Glasgow, um, I think this will be its 22nd year. Um, so it was started by Scott Mackey um, many moons ago. Um, he, he ran it for about 
think about seven or eight, maybe nine, ten years, uh, around that kind of time. And then he sort of handed over the reins to Peter Charlesworth from uh, CTPoints.com, Perceptive Med Education. Um, and then as we started doing workshops and stuff, Peter sort of uh, reached out to us via um, a third party, really, on, on, on LinkedIn. Someone got in touch with me on LinkedIn and, and, and said, you know, we should put you in touch with Peter. Um, so, so myself and Hitton, who, who's my co-director, who runs the events with me, uh, we went off and met him in Leeds, sort of halfway between Birmingham and Glasgow, um, or Edinburgh, where he's based, actually. Yeah. Um, we just had a chat about, about the conference and about what his plans were going forward, etc. So Peter then invited us up um, to come and run some sessions up there and just to see how things work. And he's, Peter's been the real sort of mentor to us, really. Okay. Uh, he's obviously very experienced when it comes to uh ct obviously running eye care um they run a lot of loc events as well and, and, and different groups and such like that and obviously we it's a website platform where you know literally thousands and thousands of professionals all over all over the world access education through it um yeah. so he's, he's quite a well well schooled in, in you know in, in education um and they also have that same platform for different medical professions as well uh, so okay. doctors uh, I think they do um, dietitians and a, f- a few different professions, basically. So, um, so yeah, so he sort of took us up to Glasgow, um, and we spent uh, we did sort of three three of the uh, eye care shows with them, and just just helping out behind the scenes a little bit, um, helping fill up the delegate bags, which <laughs> which is ever you know it's, it's, it's it needs to be done. It needs to be done. So. <laughs> One thing I'd say to everyone, when you go to these conferences, keep hold of that back, because trust me, it takes hours to put all them in. Yeah. <laughs> those, those freebies, you know, yeah, there's a lot of blood and sweat going into them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then, and then he was looking at sort of handing the conference over. Um, so I think with, with uh, I said they, they do a lot of stuff, um, perceptive mm. with all their other healthcare conferences and the, and the website, et cetera. So he was looking at sort of um, handing it over, really, um, and giving it sort of a uh, freshen it up a little bit. So that's where we sort of stepped in. And then last year we we took over the conference. Um, so we sort of took it over from last year, um, helped them out as much as we could. And then this year is our first year of running the conference. Yeah. Uh, really. Which would have been normally would have been fantastic. And then, of course, 2020 happened. Hmm. So, uh, so, 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 how did that? Uh, well, I mean, how did that change your plans? Like, it has changed everybody else's plans, especially with it being uh, your first year at running the conference, lock, stock, and barrel, so to speak. So, yeah, how, how did that affect you? Change you? Yeah, in, initially, we weren't too concerned about eye care um, because I think as as things sort of kicked off, the the, the impression that we I think the impression that everyone was kind of getting from from above was that this will be over in 12 weeks and, and we'll be back to yeah. normal. So we we had a load of, I mean, we had a full schedule of um, ICET shows um, planned anyway. Yeah. Um, so we sort of, we managed to do one in, in March in, in Birmingham. And then the next ones we sort of, sort of, had, we sort of pushed those back to the summer. So we laid everything until sort of June, July time. And we thought with eye care, we've got until you know January anyway, so we should be okay by then. So we sort of kept eye care on the back burner and sort of carried on, you know, organising it and, and whatnot and advertise it, etc. Um, and then as the year progressed, it just kind of yeah, it didn't really look like things were improving at all. So we we decided then to run all the rest of our ICT uh, shows on Zoom, uh, which worked quite well. So I think we 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 still managed to keep. Um, a good chunk of the, of the crowd that would normally come to live shows um but i think we also managed to attract a new a new audience as well in that aspect so for us the online stuff has has been great really um so we started doing webinars um you know smaller zoom meetings and then obviously when we would have been at a, a location we just yeah. put everyone onto a zoom call and did it that way so i'm guessing uh, i'm guessing that's going to continue uh, probably yeah. in that form as well because it, it works yeah definitely definitely yeah. yeah we're gonna we're gonna keep on with i mean we've got six uh sorry we've got eight live shows planned for 2021 um but we're not starting those until june yeah so yeah. we've always got backup of being able to do them online if if we can't run them in person 
Yeah. Um, okay. But we're hoping by June we should be. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fingers, legs, <laughs> arms crossed. Yeah. So, so going back to the the eye care, uh, how how are you going to? Obviously, it is going to be online. But yeah. uh, do you want to explain to us how how you've uh, how you how you're going to organise that? Yeah, so we, so we sort of made the decision um, a few months back that you know, things just weren't going to improve. And, and we spoke to uh, the hotel, because it's normally at the Hilton in Glasgow, um, and they told us that we could have a maximum of six people. So we thought that's not really going to work. So we thought the best, way, best thing to do, the safest thing to do is just to run it online. Um, I think originally we planned to do, you know, hygiene stations and, and masks and smaller groups and, and or, you know, as, as much as we could to make it COVID safe. But obviously, yeah. you know, the way things have gone, it's just, yeah, it's been impossible, really. Exactly. So we've, we've sort of set it up in, because um, normally at iCare, you've got um, about six different rooms where you can go to different workshops throughout the day. So we've got, um, we've scaled it a little bit. Uh, we've got a webinar channel. So during both, it's a two-day conference. So during both days, they're just back-to-back lectures. Um, and you can just click on like the go-to webinar link and, and watch whichever lectures you want to watch. And then we've got two other Zoom rooms, which are for discussion workshops and peer reviews. So again, people of um, those that have already booked have been sent out um, like menus basically to select which ones they want to do. Um, and that's it. Yeah, so you'll have, you'll have your schedule for the day. Yeah, uh, you can either click on the, the webinar link and watch the webinar, or you can click on one of the workshop links and, and join a Zoom discussion. Um, so we've managed to collate uh, a great team, to be honest. We, we've we've got um, we've got quite you know a few few sponsors that are presenting lectures and webinars. Um, okay. and, and, who, and who 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 are the sponsors uh, doing that? Uh, we've got. We've got Alcon, we've got Topcon, we've got Optos, um, we've got Altacore, we've got Avizor. Um, okay. th- those are the main ones that are actually presenting education. Yeah. Um, but then we've also pulled together a team of education providers um, helping out running the workshop. So obviously I'll be doing a few myself. Yeah. Um, but we've also got, um, we've got Hertfordshire University, Aston University. Uh, we've got some okay. lecturers from there running workshops. We've got um, Peter from CTPoints.com. He's doing some. Um, we have got um, we've got Dr. Kaya Patel, who is Optum of the Year at the Optician Award. He's oh, running brilliant. one with uh, yeah. He, he's running a session with uh, Gajan Singh, who runs out of the box optics. Um, we have we have Eva Darve, who was another optician award winner supplier of the year so she's running a uh, frame styling course so how you can bring frame styling and and sort of uh, sort of fashion consultation into the practice to offer that different kind of vibe that different kind of service and and the benefits that can bring to your business um we have do we have uh, optometry scotland they're running some ip um peer reviews so that's good we've also got a Prospect Union, they're running uh, a couple of CET workshops on uh, workplace scenarios and, and how to uh, understand sort of how being assertive in the workplace and also one on sexual harassment in the workplace. Okay. That should be quite interesting. Um, we've got Locomotive. Uh, we've got uh, Gotham from Locomotive who, who does a bit with us anyway. Um, Locomotive run like a, a Locom app, um, like a Locom agency app, uh, but he's running a session on um sort of difficult scenarios that locums may face in practice um sort of ethical issues especially around like covid and stuff like that uh who else we got we have do, 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 we have um optum academy uh so okay. they're running a webinar on uh, oct so optum academy are always at eye care uh, and they run uh, a pre-reg course um up in scotland at the eye care conference so they'll be there as usual supporting us um so that's a good mixed bag. bag yeah, there's a, lot, there's a mixed bag. Yeah, it's a real mixed bag. We've also got Elaine Styles from Vision Care for Homeless People. So we've got another because okay. um, we originally one of our big plans for eye care in the live format was to have uh, our own awards ceremony. Because uh, normally on the Sunday night of the two day conference, yes. there's a drinks drinks reception, a bit of a gathering. Um, done things in the past like um, horse racing night, like virtual horse racing nights. Um, 
casino nights and things like that. So we thought we'd do a bit of a, a charity fundraiser. So Vision yep. Care for Homeless People were going to be our chosen charity of the evening. Um, and we were going to have like, you know, some, some raffles and bits and bobs and try and raise a bit of money for them. Um, but also have an award ceremony, um, which obviously we were hoping to launch the I Care Awards. Uh, yes. It would have been great. Um, but obviously that's on the back burner till next year now. Uh, but it would have just been free for anyone to attend who's, who's anyone who's booked a place at the conference can attend um, and we'll just have Optum, DO, CLO, Practice of the Year. And we're also going to have Frame of the Year. OK. Um, where the, any of the frame suppliers that are exhibiting in the uh, fashion quarter at the conference can submit a frame and then the delegates would actually vote on the frame during the conference as to which would, you know, as to which would be the winner. Okay. So that was done. Okay. But yeah, yeah, question. absolutely. And then, of course, you've uh, you've got a, 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 a virtual exhibition. Uh, yes, we have to have between yeah. as well. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so so the virtual exhibition will feature all of our education providers. Um, one that I didn't mention a minute ago is Stanley Keys. So Stanley runs Optometry Educate uh, Optometry Evolution, and he does a lot very of well. Um, emergency training so that red eye the red eye emergency packs which are fantastic yeah. but sam's always at eye care as well so yeah, glad to have him on board as well yeah. so all yeah, of our uh, he's brilliant he's a fantastic guy um very knowledgeable very you know uh, in, in terms of emergency eye care but he's definitely the go-to guy um so anyone all of our exhibitors and all of our ict sponsors obviously optelec um bondi um Taya, uh, Altacore, we, we've got loads, we've got loads basically, it's hard to list <laughs> off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah. uh, is, is, is Lens, Lens Tech amongst them as Lens well? Tech, Lens Tech are amongst them as well, yeah, definitely Lens Tech are always, are always. You can't, you can't forget Nigel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> definitely, no, definitely. Yeah. And um, so yeah, so, so they're all going to be in our virtual exhibition hall um, at iCare, so again, it's just, it's, it's it's not the same as you know being able to go walk around look at stands get your freebies no. this that the other as you normally would at a live show but it's just an opportunity so everyone's in in one sort of separate zoom room and then delegates can log in and we can put them into breakout rooms with, with different exhibitors and they can have a chat with them um or or we can arrange meetings and stuff like that really so that's how, how that kind of works but exactly exactly it gives the individual opportunity to have a well actually in many ways have a one-on-one -on -one, which is what they would do yeah. at uh, an exhibition anyway so yeah, yeah, yeah okay okay so for to, to to kind of wrap it up then uh uh when is this year's uh ik on because i don't think we've mentioned the dates so uh, this year it's the 17th and 18th of Jan. So yeah, we come Sunday and Monday. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And uh, we'll provide all the uh, the links uh, 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 when the, when this goes out, and uh, and hopefully we'll uh, we'll yeah we'll 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 all see everybody and all each other virtually, and hopefully uh, this time next year we'll actually yeah. Uh, yeah we'll actually be able to do uh, a lot more face to face again which is uh, feels yeah. like a lifetime ago it does doesn't it it does <laughs> and I think it's, um yeah i think i think now now that uh, optra fair and 100% have merged it's you yeah. know there's definitely need for another conference really i think and and i can it, it's a different vibe it's not um it has got an exhibition it has got that element to it but it it's not um, it's not a trade show with a little bit of CET attached. It's it's very much an education event, um, and we we definitely want to make it the go-to education event, um, particularly with introducing more IP content. Um, we always have lots of low vision content and you know a good variety of it. We want it to be the place to go for education. Um, and, and again, we we want to have, bring in some sort of non-CET stuff, some business stuff, uh, some OA stuff as well. So um, stuff to support staff and things like that as well next year so hopefully we can make it you know a, a very broad um, education package for for anyone in, in optics really that's the idea um, but we're also looking at doing I mean the iCare Glasgow will always be the flagship event um, that will be the main one uh, where we do the iCare awards etc that'll be the, the big two-day conference up in Glasgow that's going to be on the 16th and 17th of January 2022 so we're going to put 
stuff on our website so we can you know, people can start booking on that soon as well yeah. and we're also going to do uh some smaller eye care sort of one day conferences uh dotted around as well so we're going to do an eye care okay. uh, in 2022 which will be in may and um, we're going to do that at the uh, abdo national resource center right. um, okay. I think for it really so that'll be like a sunday that'll be like a one day event and there'll be a few different CT rooms you can go to. There'll be web like lectures and there'll be discussion yeah. groups and things like that. Really, so that's 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 the plans going forward. Okay. If everything um, is back to normal, by yeah, then. yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, we, yeah, we, we we would hope so. We would hope so by by then. Oh well, that's uh, that's brilliant. Well, Stuart, I'd uh, I'd just like to thank you very much for your time uh today uh i think it's been uh, really good to find out uh more about yourself and uh more about your organization and, and more about uh, uh i care 2021 so uh yeah yeah no thank you thanks for having me um and thanks to upflet really because obviously upflet have supported the ict stuff for a few years now um and it's it's great to have hands-on experience with low vision aid isn't it i think i mean no yeah you both share um especially interested in low vision and, and, and we, we, we also feel that there's more that could be done in practice in terms of low vision. So that's the kind of angle that we've, we've sort of come at it from um, with our stuff. But I think Absolutely. like I think just having you guys there, hands on, get people get to touch LVA, see how they work. It's, you know, it takes away that fear factor, doesn't it? And takes away that kind of, I think people- It certainly does. Yeah, yeah. People yeah, feel that they don't know enough about low vision to sort of recommend. But once you actually get your hands on a few LVAs, you think, well, that's easy to use and you can... Exactly. It's not, it's not scary at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting Brilliant stuff. Pay for that condition, but, you know, but there's, there's so much we can do to help them. So, yeah, so let's yeah. bring it more into practice. That's our, that's our goal. Yeah, yeah. I, I was too. I was too, definitely. Well, again, thank you very much for your time, Stuart. All right, thank you. Okay, you take care. Take care. Cheers. Enjoy Bye. the snow.